Hi, I'm Sharon Rackham King, an artist in Corvallis, Oregon. I use she, her pronouns, and I paint primarily in watercolors and acrylics. I always love to sit down and paint, but today I'm particularly excited because I get to share with you how I enjoy painting evergreen trees. Let's get started. Your brush comes with a cover, and that is a nice thing to keep around to protect the bristles and when you are storing it or traveling with it. It will be a little stiff at first, so you can dip it in water and um, just gently touch it so that it will um, soften up and be pliable. And we use cool water so that it doesn't the hot water can interfere with the mechanics of the brush and make it come apart. We have some very nice watercolor paper here from Windsor and Newton, and we have our paint that goes in this order. I know the darks are a little hard to see, especially on camera. Yellow, orange, red, brown, blue, and green. I didn't include purple because I thought brown might be a bit more useful. It's always nice to have a sheet where you have the colors available so you know what they're going to look like and if you ever want to test it out this sheet is handy as well we have a reference this is where we are going this general feel of what into what painting and we know the sun is here and so we'll have a little more brightness on this side of the painting a little more darkness over here so if you just take a piece of paper towel maybe like a quarter sheet of it and dip it so that it's fairly wet, not quite dripping, and you can get your paper wet. You've already done your drawing, is what I imagine, and um, we don't want to push hard on this paper and smudge the pencil around, and mechanical pencil helps a lot in uh, lessening that kind of a smudge. All right, and if you need to look at it from the side to see if there's a sheen to it, you can sure do that. I see that in the sky we have kind of a gray blue, so I'm going to mix in my center well of the palette some blue and some brown. That makes a nice stormy gray. And we're going to continue to, and you just glide the brush across the paper, if it skips and you can see white of the paper showing through, then you um, perhaps need more water. A little more brown. So I'll make this version, this next band in the sky, a little more blue. See it's skipping there, so the water, the paper isn't very wet, so I'm just gonna get a little water on my brush. If I don't swish my brush around in the water, most of the paint stays on it, which is definitely what we want. Paint does not do us any good when it's <laughs> in the water. We want it to go straight from the brush right onto the paper without lessening the effect of it. But speaking of lessening the effect, when you do want something to be more pale, as I actually want this next area to be, I just dip my brush in the water and um, continue to bring some of the color down so the water weakens the strength of the pigment and for this next area I think I'll get a little green with it okay all right um, what we will um, take a look at first is these trees in the background. So when you see the background trees, you'll notice they're more blue and they're more blobby, amorphous shape, um, not finite, and they're smaller. And those are things that help indicate that they're in the distance. So I've drawn these with broken lines because that is more natural. I'm going to mix some blue-green and add some brown in so that it, it dulls it because we don't want these to be um, as bright as the ones in the foreground. So 
or the one in the foreground, I should say. Okay, um, I paint as I drew with some broken lines. Um, it's more natural, and I try to make the um, branches off center instead of right next to each other they're offset and they're going like a V towards the top of the tree and splayed out like arms wide open in the center and then heading down towards the base of the tree. I'm going to leave this snowbank area without much color in it so that it will look like snow and painting some broken lines here that are going to um, splay out Watercolor dries more light than it looks when you first apply it. I think I'll add more green in. And I try to um, constantly be mixing color so that you have um, some differences, some variation to what you are seeing. We do leave a few gaps because you can often in trees see a little bit of the sky or whatever it is behind it peeking through, just coming up close to the snowbank here. And that is a nice natural look. And let's come over to this. So this side of the paper is much drier. You can tell that these lines are quite a bit more finite. They're a lot more defined. And so if we need to, I think I'm just gonna dip my brush in and get the paint more wet that's being applied to it if the paper isn't very wet. So we get this nice kind of blooming effect where it bleeds into the water. It doesn't do that on dry paper, which you can see right here. I'm gonna get, you know, it a little more wet. And when shapes overlap, that tends to make things look nice and natural. And again, I like to continue to change the color just a smidge. Just about every time I, you know, take the brush to the paper again. Um, one thing that you might notice too, is if you start at the top and make a stroke down, it can start more finitely where, I'll just do this over here, um, when it's not wet enough, but when you end, sometimes it'll do a blob at the end. And so when you want something to be at a point, like the tip of the tree at the top there, you um, might start there and swipe it down. We can now, let's see, let's just finish that a little bit. And we can now work on our star of the show, the main tree. I do not like to leave paint unused on my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of these darks here, but then I'm gonna, swish my brush. I'm going to take a look at the direction of the sun and dip into my yellow. So if the sun is coming from this angle, it will be coming across here. Shadows would be coming off the tree this way. And um, you would see more yellow on the left-hand side, and you would see more yellow towards the tips of the branches. Like in springtime, when they get the beautiful new um, growth, and it looks so sweet on the young parts of the trees there. Um, closer to the sun is this left side here in this circumstance and towards the top and towards the left. So we'll have some at the bottom, we'll have some over here on the right, and we'll have some towards the center, but it's primarily externally um, towards the outer edges and towards the top. All right, so continuing on with the theme of mixing, let's add yellow into what we already have because we're having color harmony when we continue to use the same paint that's in the palette with a little bit of mixing every time. So these strokes, they're, they're bigger in the center and then coming out and up towards the top because the top has the upper V. There's that blob I was talking about. So this time I'm gonna swipe down and I don't have the blob at the top there. And I'm gonna swipe in like that and in like that. Okay. Um, so you change up your strokes, you change up your color. And I'm roughly going along with the pencil lines that I can see underneath. And what you do on one side 
you want to mimic on the other side as well. It's very clear that this part of the paper is a lot more wet than this part of the paper. So I am going to bring a brush that has some color on it and lots of water and come down here so that we get it a little more wet into wet. When you want to try painting on dry paper, it's a very exciting process as well. It's just quite different than this wet into wet. I feel like starting out and something that is natural, like a tree, that the wet into wet gives us a pleasing natural effect. And, and so that's why I thought it might be a good one to try, just in case you haven't um, done watercolor before. And if you have, I'm super excited too that you're, that you're painting along with me and trying this. I like to get some little kind of sprigs and see how they don't even need to be connected to the tree. They're actually not touching, but they'll have the effect like they are touching. The you know tree has that upside down ice cream cone shape, conical shape, and I wanna maintain that. And I'm seeing that this is really spreading out more than I want it to. So I just use my paper towel, a dry one, as an eraser, and then I can come back in and be more finite with it. Oh my gosh, that made a world of difference. Isn't that amazing? Just like what you can do with a paper towel. I think that's cool to have that yellow halo effect there. Okay, arms opening out in the center, coming down a bit at the bottom. Looks like we need to mix up some more color to use. Um... Okay, there we go. We want to make sure that it is noticeably wider at the bottom than in the center. And that being said, let's focus on getting some darks in to our tree. This is a little bit brighter green. We'll use it because it's there. It's on the it's on the palette, it's on the brush. The wetter things are, the more they blend together. This is such a nice fresh color that some of it should be up there towards the, the, the sun at the, at the top. Sometimes they have that little jaggedy, squiggly top. Okay, and we want some of that sky showing through in places. Um, let's get it into some darker areas. So I'm going to add some blue and some brown so that towards the, the interior, the center of the tree, you'll have some more darks and towards the bottom. And then on this right side, because the sun is farther away from it, you'll get more of the darks. But you always, you know, what you do on one side, you always wanna do a little on the other, especially at the bottom, get some more darks in here. And as you can see, this is pretty random. You, you don't wanna do things real symmetrical Let's mix these two together and get an in-between color. Fill in a little space here. Leave some white space. It's actually really beautiful to leave some white space. Too big of a gap can be awkward. And then, yeah, as your brush gets dry, you can see the these dry effects that it, that it makes. Let's see, there, that's kind of a good visible one. Okay. All right, this is coming along pretty well. I want to um, get the trunk in and I wanna do broken lines and um, different, different lengths, not all the same, and get some feeling of branches too. Again, more at the, at the bottom with it being darker and start to do the trunk that so this is dry painting quite a bit different than than wet into wet interrupt a few of these and do a few crisscrosses okay um i am going to rinse my brush because it's time to get some yellow it's well i'm going to go up here first because i want it to be pure i want to get a little more yellow 
at the top towards the sun. I really like that yellow area. You just can't plan stuff like that. That's the beauty and sometimes the frustration of watercolor, but you don't get that with any other medium, the spontaneity, the will of its own. This is my finger brush. I use it a lot. Um, you may not wish to, but it's this paint is not toxic, so it's, you know, it's okay if you do. Yeah, I don't want it quite that light down there. Just fill in a couple areas lightly, not not all the way. And so um, I think I'll just grab a, a smidge more brown here and try to blend that in a bit. And I don't want it to look like a solid kind of a, you know, like brick type of shape. So I'll just come in and... Um, change it up a little bit so it's jagged. I noticed this up here. Um, I think I might uh, mix up a little more gray and touch this up here and do a shadow in the snow, do a couple shadows of the trees. So let's see, we've got water that isn't totally clean at this point, but that's okay for these purposes. A shadow, you want to have the colors that are already in um, the painting continue on for the harmony of the color palette. Okay, so this is a bit of a risk to come back in um, to a painting that has already dried but I think it'll work out okay. And so this is kind of cool. When you, when you use the belly of the brush, the side of the brush, and gently don't, you know, scrape it hard so you can like hear scraping, but when you um, are doing it on dry paper and this paper has beautiful texture, then you get these cool effects. And it looks like I have a little, little fuzz there that I'll get out when I'm dry. These background trees look nice, I think. Um, I'm just gonna fill in a little bit here because I don't wanna draw a lot of attention with what's called um, contrast. When you have something that's very small next to something very large or something very dark next to something very light, our eye goes to it because our brain says, uh, that's unusual, I need to notice it. And I am looking for the viewer of this painting in particular to notice this tree and just let these be in the background. Okay, and it's kind of nice where you have a little bit of white in the sky. This color is indeed, as it turns out, a good shadow color. And just like a baseball pitcher has a mound, so does a tree often. And to make it a little less rigid and a little more natural, I just take my finger and you could um, do it if you had like maybe a wider brush that was not very wet at all. This got a lot of the tree trunk color in it, which is kind of cool, um, kind of fun. And then the sun comes this way, so we just want a light shadow that has some of the color of um, the object, which in this case is like a, a this tree or maybe bank of trees that's in the background. We want it lighter, more pale. We want it less defined. Want to mimic that over here with this tree or bank of trees. And then, and it's kind of cool to have a, a horizon line there. You can see that those are deeper in the background. For this shadow, I am going to um, come back to it a little bit later because I don't want to interrupt um, what we have going on here. I'm just going to show you one more thing before we move on to tree number two, and that is we've been using the bristles of our brush a lot. We can take the other end of it and make a, a few scrapes. I don't want to do a lot of them, and I want to make sure that they are random and not, you know, samesies. Um, I want to make them vary in length and in position and not symmetrical to the, you know, one across the way. 
from it. Maybe a couple will, will cross the center line there. And maybe some of them will have this downward motion. Oh my gosh, the water, I, you know, I had more wet, um, a wetter brush down here to do the trunk and it really made an interesting bloom here. When it dries a bit, I wanna come back in and add more color to that area, but it's a cool effect. Okay, we're gonna set that off to the side, let it dry for a bit, come back in a minute and work on tree number two.